So a friend of mine reached out to me and he says, hey Jay, I think that the blower motor for my air conditioner, the one that's actually in the furnace, is bad. If I give you my furnace model and serial number, can you help me track down a new motor for my unit? And it turned out that his furnace had a variable speed ECM blower motor. And with those kinds of motors, oftentimes the thing that goes bad is actually the computer module that goes on the motor and not the motor itself. He was gonna replace the whole motor thinking that it's all one piece. He didn't even realize that those two pieces can come apart, the computer module and the motor. And from my experience working in a lot of these furnaces, oftentimes it's the module that goes bad, not the motor. So that's what I suggested to him. I said, hey, why don't you take that motor apart and just take a look at that computer board and all the resistors on it, see if you can see anything burnt or melted. He took it apart and sure enough, there was a resistor on there that was melted. He was able to track down the ECM module that he needed on eBay, he replaced it and everything worked fine. And the cost of doing that was about one fifth of what it would have cost him if he bought the whole assembly. If you're an HVAC technician watching this, I would be really interested to know what your experience is like with those ECM blower motors. How often does the motor fail compared to the module? And the furnace behind me also has an ECM blower motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart and I'm gonna pull that module off the motor so you could see what it looks like inside. And there's a few other things I wanna talk about when we get there. And of course, when you're taking apart anything on a furnace, the first thing you wanna do is turn the power off. And in this video, I'm not gonna be taking too much time showing you how to disassemble everything and take that blower motor out. I have another video where I show how to clean the blower wheel. In that video, I show detailed instructions. I'm gonna put a link to it in the comments. By the way, this setup I have right here is super convenient. If you don't have one of these tools in your arsenal, I would highly recommend adding them to your tool bag. By the way, if you're not sure if your furnace has an ECM blower motor or just a regular motor, an easy way to tell is to take a look at the motor where the wires come in. Most ECM blower motors are gonna have plugs going into them, whereas regular motors, the wires just kinda go right into the motor. So this is what this plug looks like. And a lot of times it will be two plugs. So if you have about five wires going right into the motor, you probably have a regular PSC motor. And if you have wires going into plugs, then most likely you have an ECM blower motor. And the good news is, you don't have to pull this whole entire assembly out just to figure that out. Simply take a flashlight and look in there on the side, and you should be able to see what kind of motor you have. With some ECM motors, you're gonna have to pull the whole motor out and take the bracket off of it before you can disconnect the module from the motor. But on this one, I simply have to take out two screws up on top and I should be able to pull this module right off. And here is how the computer module looks like inside. Before I can completely take it off, there is one more plug that connects the motor to the module that I'm gonna to need to pull out. To take it out, you just need to press the tab on the side and that releases the catch and you can pull this plug right out. So let's go ahead and do that. And here it is. This is why many ECM blower motors fail because of this module right here. And to be more specific, the part that fails most often is this black resistor right over here. So if you're good at soldering and you have an electronics parts shop near you, then you might be able to even go and track down a resistor like this and replace only the resistor. I have done this before and it does work. You can actually physically see that this resistor is burnt out. So you cut it off, solder in the new one, and almost every time everything works well. But for the rest of us who'd be intimidated about soldering in a new resistor, you could replace this whole module and generally you could find one on eBay for a pretty good price. 
which definitely beats having to replace the whole assembly, the motor and the computer module. Another upside of only replacing the ECM module is that the job is just a lot easier. You saw how easy it was for me to pull the module off, whereas if you're pulling the whole blower motor out, that would make the job about five times longer. And just so you know, they do sell troubleshooting tools for these ECM blower motors. It's an adapter that you plug into the motor and it actually tells you whether it's the motor that is bad or the ECM module or both. But the bad news is that these testers are generally really expensive, so unless you're an HVAC technician that's going to use this thing more than once, you're probably better off just ordering a new module and trying it out. But like I said earlier, it's not all completely guesswork, because oftentimes you're actually going to see burnt marks or something melted in the module if something is actually wrong with the module. But there is a chance that the motor is bad as well, so it's up to you if you want to take that risk. Though there is one thing that is a dead giveaway that the blower motor is bad. Take this blower wheel with your finger and try spinning it. It should spin relatively easy. And it should continue to spin for a while. See how I only pushed it a little bit and it kept spinning? So let's do that again. Look at that. It spins very freely. If you try to spin it and this wheel is locked up, or it's very hard to spin, then there's a good chance that your blower motor is bad. And to further eliminate guesswork, there is a few more checks we could do if you have a multimeter. The first easy test you could do is to verify whether this resistor or limiter is bad or not. This is the same one that I mentioned that often fails. You'll need to set your meter to the continuity setting, which is this sonar looking thing. So let's turn my meter on. And here's my little sonar symbol right in the corner. This setting checks if we have continuity from one point to another. And if we do, there should be a beep. So then we simply put our meter leads, one on one side and one on the other of this resistor, and if it's good, we should hear a beep. I am hearing a beep, so we know that this resistor is good. Oftentimes, you will see some kind of a burnt mark, but sometimes you don't see anything but the board is still bad. By the way, see these two little screws? There's one right here and one right here. If you take them out, you can flip this board over and look for any burnt spots on the other side as well. There's also a little white clip that you have to squeeze together in order to detach this board from the housing. And there's actually nothing wrong with my motor, so of course I'm not finding any burnt spots. That's about it for the module. And there's a few more things we can check with the motor. When it comes to motor failure, a motor can go bad in two ways. It can either fail mechanically or electrically. When we were spinning the blower wheel and seeing if it spins, we were checking if the motor is mechanically good. If it was jammed or seized up, then we know that it failed mechanically. As for electric failure, this motor has electric windings, which sometimes melt, burn out, or short out to the casing. So one check we can do is that same continuity check. So I still have my meter set to continuity. And I can go ahead and stick my meter leads into every single one of these pins, one at a time. So one lead goes in the pin, and the other lead goes to the housing of the blower motor. I should not be getting any continuity between any of the pins and the housing. So that's the first one. Then I can check the second, the third, and I should not be getting any beeps. If I get a beep somewhere, that would mean that one of the windings inside of the motor is shorting out to the body or the casing of this motor. If the motor passed the continuity test, we can move on to the resistance test to check if the windings are failing or not. I'm going to go ahead and reset my meter to get us back to our auto ranging resistance setting. And let's go ahead and check the resistance of the windings on this motor. On the outside pins, I'm getting 10.4 ohms. If I take one of the leads out and put it in the middle, I'm getting 10.5. 
And then if I do the middle with the other side, I am getting 10.4. And keep in mind that if you have a loose connection, the readings are gonna be bouncing all over the place. So make sure you have a good connection. That's 10.5. So that's good. With these kind of motors, you want all three readings to be within 10% of each other. So we had 10.4, 10.5, and 10.5. So the electrical windings on this motor are good. It's electrically good, it's mechanically good. So if your blower motor is not working, yet it passes these tests, that means this piece right here is not your problem. The problem is either the module or the control board in the furnace is not sending power to the motor. And that is all I had. I hope this video will save the day for some of you and you're gonna end up only having to replace that module and save a bunch of money. If I forgot to mention something or talk about something in this video about the ECM motor, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, let me ask you a question. What is worse than biting into an apple and seeing a worm? biting into an apple and only seeing half a worm. And while you're thinking about that one, let me tell you one more. Do you know how on Instagram you can post reels and watch reels? So if I send you reel, you send me reel, do you know what that means? We are in a relationship.